Another important part of uh, the motor system is actually located in the parietal cortex. So it's uh, over here and uh, in particular the intraparietal sulcus, which is this fissure that you can see here marked. Um, and that's very important for um, sensory guided movements, this part of the, of the brain. Um, and it's involved in coding visual information so that it can actually be used by the motor system. So by coding, for instance, both the information of where objects are located, but also what type of objects uh, it is, which can then be used in order to perform uh, some certain types of, uh, for instance, grasping movements. <coughs> in particular, the uh, area, the anterior interparietal area is um, intimately linked to the ventral premotor cortex. Um, and you will see that there are anatomical connections between this area uh, in the interparietal cortex. Um, and it's used in order to encode the um, the visual impression that you get from an object into something that you can then use to grasp the object, for instance. Um, so it's mainly the visual part of, of coding that, that, it, that it's involved in, but it's, it's used sort of as, as a transformation link between just the mere visual impression of, uh, of the object but it's, it's used in order to make the ventral premotor cortex able to uh, code the, the more uh, fine details of how you should grasp the objects. It's also used, for instance, if you first watch an object and then you, um, you later on have to, for instance, identify the object again without vision, uh, then you use the anterior interparietal area. So if you, for instance, have to um, first watch some objects and then you have to maybe, after somebody hides the object, you have to find, okay, which one of the objects was it that, for instance, the experiments are pointed at? Well, then you use the anterior interparietal um, area of the interparietal cortex or the interparietal sulcus. So it's sort of a cross-modal uh, link between vision and, and movements uh, that, that you have in this area. Um, so some of our colleagues in, uh, in uh, London have made some experiments where they used um, transcranial magnetic stimulation. And uh, some of you, at least I, I know, know the technique, but uh, the idea is that you can activate with a magnetic field, the primary motor cortex, and you can then measure the, um, how much the muscle twitches when, um, when you have activated the primary motor cortex. <coughs> and if you then first, you, uh, you, you stimulate one part of the brain, in this case, the ventral premotor cortex, and then afterwards, a few milliseconds after you uh, stimulate the primary motor cortex, you can see that you can actually, by stimulating at certain times, first in the ventral premotor cortex, and then measure the output after you have stimulated uh, the primary motor cortex, you can see that the ventral premotor cortex is linked to the, um, to the primary motor cortex in the amount of how much output you get when you stimulate the primary motor cortex. So what they did in this experiment was that they asked subjects to either grasp for a pen or a disc. And uh, when you do that, when you grasp for a pen, then you have to, to use your index finger and your thumb to, uh, to make the movements. So they measured um, muscle activity in the first dorsal interosseous muscle here uh, in the, with the, by the index finger. And when you have to grasp a disc, well, then you use your, your little finger and your thumb. So um, they, um, they measured muscle activity also from the, uh, from, from the little finger muscle here in the abductor digitus minimum. And um, what they then showed was that if you were preparing to grasp for the disc, you could see that when you first stimulated the ventral premotor cortex and then the primary motor cortex, you could see that the, um, the output from the, from, the, uh, from the primary motor cortex was increased in the index finger 
but not uh, from from the uh, from the little finger because you were not supposed to grasp with the with the little finger. Whereas if you switch the object so that it was the opposite, well then uh, you could see the opposite effect that when you saw just saw the object and when you were preparing to grasp the objects, well then if it was the disc, you could see that uh, that the uh, that the motor uh, evoked potentials in the little finger was increased, uh, indicating that. <coughs> that the connectivity, so the, the, uh, the information about how the, uh, the subjects should grasp these uh, objects was changed from uh, the ventral premotor cortex. <coughs> what they then did was that they used also this technique of, of, uh, of uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation to actually inhibit the function of the anterior uh, intraparietal uh, sulcus, and if you did that, subjects could not any longer grasp the um, the object as precise. And you also saw that this uh, exact coding of whether they had to grasp for the pen or the disc was abolished. So what you see out here is that in the case where you have to grasp for the pen, and uh, this is before you actually do anything to the anterior intraparietal um, area here, you see that. If you prepare for, uh, for uh, grasping the pen, you see that the index finger um, muscle gets more excitable. And if you grasp for the disc, it's the, uh, it's the muscles of the little finger that, that are uh, increased, the ADM muscle. If you then inhibit this area, you can see that this very strict association between how precise you have to code either for one or the other is, is now no longer present in the two cases. So these three areas are actually highly interlinked when you have to do these very precise grasping movements.